Today we're going to go through 38 tips and tricks for Alpha 9 team and medium and early game staff. Let's get into it. Tip number one, engines are quite easy to find early game in compared to mechanical parts. Grab yourself an engine, scrap it, 30 mechanical parts. If you're getting chased by a zombie early game, find yourself a house, craft yourself a wooden hatch, place it down, lift it up. Instantly the zombie can't get in, but you can hit the zombie. If you don't want to get into conflict with a zombie and you're trying to distract him, grab yourself a snowball or a stone, throw it at something hard, make a bit of noise. The zombie's attracted to the stone and off you go. Tip number four is vending machines. When you talk to a trader and you go to his food options, you'll see, for example, a can of sham is 120 duke coins. But if you go downstairs and you buy it from the vending machine instead, you'll see it's actually 60, it's 50% discount from a vendor machine as opposed to the trader. And on the note of food, not many people know this, the green bar is your food and the blue bar down here, that's your water. You'll watch these go down during the day as you run around and fight zombies. Green bar goes down is your food, blue bar goes down, that's your water. Tip number six, ladders. By removing the bottom two rungs of any ladders, you'll find you can jump up and get up, but zombies cannot follow you. Again, destroying the bottom two rungs of ladders prevents zombies chasing you up, but if you jump, you can still climb the ladders. And whilst we're at the trader, we can't forget tip number seven, which is junk turret ammo. Regular scrap iron, if you go to craft recipes, robotic turret ammo, and craft, say, 500, these sell for a great deal at the trader. Okay, we've crafted our junk turret ammo. If we compare these, 1,500 iron, it sells for 300 pounds. 500 robotic turret ammo, it sells for 900. So you're tripping your money just by turning it from iron into junk turret ammo. Tip number eight, snow. Grab yourself a shovel, come to a snow biome, Dig a load of snow. Come out here once every two or three weeks in game. Grab yourself an absolute butt ton of snow. Leave it in your boxes. Snow turns into murky water, which obviously you can turn into purified water, which is just absolutely brilliant. Tip number nine. You can't mention the water without mentioning the endless water glitch. Grab yourself a bucket. Make yourself a two by two internal diameter square. Right click and place inside. As you can see, it fills up all four corners of this square. Then when you right click to pick the water up in the bucket, it leaves a tiny amount over there, so you can place this anywhere, just say here, and then pick this up, put it back down, bang. Tip number 10, low level weapons. Early game you might need them, some people do, some people don't. This for example, a level 1 hunting rifle is worth 40 jukes, but if you scrap it, the parts are now worth 90. If you're trying to avoid combat, tip number 11 is for you. I've spawned in a couple of bags here, reason being is things such as abandoned rubbish, glass, make noise. If I'll be quiet, you'll be able to hear it. They make noise when you walk over them. Avoid walking over rubbish to avoid attracting zombies. Early game, you need to get as many kills as possible without getting caught. So your best bet is to hold C to crouch or press Control to remain crouched at all times. I'm going to hold C in this occasion. Uh, whilst crouch, you do double damage. They can't see us at present, but when we shoot them, as you can see up there, sneak damage times 3.5. There are perks that can manage this. If you go into agility and you go to hidden strike, the more points you put into this, the more sneak damage you will do up to 250% more damage. Tip number 13. When building is seven days to die, the terrain usually doesn't go to your liking. So your best bet is to grab a load of frames and what we call flatten the floor. Simply place a frame and hold right click. All that does is it moves the terrain into its basically its vortex or vortok block, whatever it's called. Um, and you basically flatten the ground out completely. And when you pick them all back up, you can see the floor is now completely flat. It takes all your plant fibers away as well. Nice big flat area. And it shows you where the, where the hills are. It brings the hills up to the correct square block. A bit like Minecraft. Boom. What we call flattening the floor. Tip number 14, getting ammo out of guns. So say for example, we have this here. It's got a lot more durability, but it's got zero bullets. How do we get the bullets from this gun into this gun? Easy. We hit modify. It takes the bullets out of that gun, which allows us to then load them into this one. Tip number 15, Molotovs actually burn through doors. Very hard to show here. I'm going to try to do it. But if we get the attention of this zombie here, we close the door, we throw the Molotov at the door itself. What happens, as, as you can see, it's burnt him through the other side of the door. Molotovs burn through doors. Tip number 16. If you find yourself in a snow biome for any reason, whether you're scavenging, looting, doing missions, you can get cold very quickly and it will really, really affect stamina if you're in here for too long. Your best bet is to put a couple of torches down 
and also light a campfire. Fortitude is a thing in this game and you will get cold very, very easily. Torches and campfires prevent that and they will keep you warm and they will prevent your stamina from going down. Next on the list, bird's nest. When you scavenge a bird's nest, you can get the content. If you break it down, you'll also get extra feathers. See that? We looted two, we got three more from smashing it down. Bird's nests do respawn. Most people don't know this, but bird's nests do respawn if you leave them and scavenge them again. Tip number 18, admittedly, I forget about this one myself, and that is pocket mods for your inventory, not for your armor, but for your actual clothes. Clothing pocket mods can be crafted from the get from day one. You just need to find the items. However, you can get clothing double pocket mods, which give you times two carrying capacity. But these, I think you require a book or a certain perk to get it. But these here, you can craft off the bat, and they can give you three or four slots, depending on your armor. All you do is you go to say your t-shirt or your shorts or your pants, modify, throw it on, and if you look down here, it gives you an extra slot. So you could have, say for example, trousers, t-shirt, and something up here, and you've got two or three extra slots which you can use for inventory. Okay, we are back at the trader for tip number 19, a double secret stash glitch. Not really a glitch, but more of a, a feature. Let's show you how it's done. So to pull off this glitch or this feature, what we need to do is have some nerdy glasses, which we have right here, and a couple of points. So go to your intellect tree, go to better bartering, and you're gonna put points into here until you get to salesman. So put a couple of points in here. I think it's three, sorry. Yeah, three points, and we go to salesman. As you can see, we've unlocked level two of better bartering. What we need here is level five to get to sales manager. So use this to get to level four. So four points in total, two points in here. Now you haven't unlocked this. What you need to do is place on your nerdy glasses because they, they give you one intellect. So when you wear them, you'll notice now when you go to intellect and you go to better bartering, you can actually unlock better bartering level three because it gives you your increased level five right here, which is what the glasses give you. Hope this makes sense. So you unlock this, bang. Now, for example, we go into here, inventory, secret stash. Okay, so take the first five items. You've got art of mining, rockets, and some ammunition. Obviously, there's loads of different bits and pieces in here. Oh, a crucible. So if we come out and we take off the glasses, let me just double show you again. Here we have better barter in level three. When you take off the glasses, it reduces your perception down to four again which means this is no longer unlocked. You're now back at salesman level two. So we're going to be secret trader, secret stash even, reflex schematic, urban combat, it's changed. This is level two secret stash. When we put these on, this is level three secret stash. So tip number 20 is going to be loot respawn in boxes. Let's say for example, I've gone in here and I've looted all of these items. Okay, and then let's say for example, we now took this place as our own and we placed the bedroll. Within the bedroll area, nothing will respawn. Nothing within a certain block radius, I think it's about 50 blocks, won't respawn. However, if we stick a stone, a single stone, into each of the boxes, like so, and then waited the standard in-game 30 days for loot respawn, let's say we did, you know, fast forward 30 days, and we went in here, it'd still say reinforced chest, it'd still be a stone, but when you took the stone out, and you come away, gave it a few seconds, go back in, this will be relootable. You will be able to reloot this within the, the, the standard in-game 30 days. If you change it to say five or seven or 10, the, the same rule applies. But ideally what to remember is keep something inside the boxes at all times. And no matter what, as soon as the respawn day is up, you will be able to respawn. Once you take the stone, go away, come back. It will be lootable again. Now having infections, having broken legs, having any form of physical ailment will reduce either your stamina or your HP. If your kill to death ratio doesn't actually bother you, what you can do is grab some broken glass, eat the actual glass, it will cause internal bleeding and you will die. But when you respawn, you will not have an infection, any broken legs, any ailments, you'll be perfectly fine. Tip number 22, tree stumps give you honey which can cure infection. All you need to do is smash on a tree stump until it is broken. It's only a small chance, it's not guaranteed, but some tree stumps you break them, and as you can see down here, times one honey. Now honey does cure infection, it cures 5%. Anything over, you need a second jar of honey or antibiotics. Tip number 23, making blocks float. This isn't a new thing, it's been known for quite some time. I actually have a video on so I'll link that in the top right hand corner now. And basically what you can do is we've come up here, we're now three blocks higher. When you've got these flagstone blocks in your hand, you hold R, you go to shape, and you change them to plate, which is here, flagstone plate. Select it, press escape. Now what you need to do, we'll come off it for this. So what you need to do once you're down is go here to advance, left click until the plate is flat against the pole. 
like so, and then right click. Now, as you can see, that actually class is a full block. You can't place anything on that, but you can place it this side. So if you keep left clicking again until it's a complete opposite direction, bang, you now have floating blocks. What that essentially does is means you can jump through, you can jump over, all sorts of things. Let me jump up there actually. So you can jump, 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 and then as you can see here, there's a gap but it's actually floating. You can make base designs and make bases float on all sorts. I have linked it, as I said earlier. Do check it out. You can do all sorts of fun and fandangle things. It is a little game breaking, not something I usually do, um, but it's quite fun nonetheless and a little trip for new players. Okay, tip number 24 is beds. No, we're not going for a nap. We're actually going to wrench them. Springs are the one thing in this game that you cannot actually craft. You can only get them by kind of looting them or, or scavenging them. Beds are the best for springs, absolute best, and they're in absolutely every POI as well. So every bed you see, wrench it, scrap it, loot it, whatever you can do to it. And in the end, you'll see you'll have lots and lots of springs, which use all sorts of traps, mostly grenades. So yeah, keep an eye out for your beds and get wrenching your beds. Tip number 25 is glue, specifically bones. Bones create glue. So anytime you, anytime you get a chance, kill any single animal, carve up any single gore block any way of getting bones you must always always go for it duct tape is like an unwritten commodity in seven days to die so again cut up your gore blocks cut up your animals whenever you can get a chance to get bones make sure you keep them because bones equals glue tip number 26 is instead of using your axe to carve up animals use your knife you'll get more resources you'll get more bones you'll get more meat same goes for gore blocks don't use your axe use your knife Tip number 27, Screamer EXP farming. So if you want experience and you just want to fight, the best thing to do is grab yourself nine or more campfires and fill them up with wood. And once filled up and turned on, you'll see they'll be burning away within minutes. You'll see on the left-hand side, heat chunk is 54%. They'll go up and up and up super quick and, and Screamers will spawn. That's an early game kind of thing. If you're looking for a late game version, burning barrels. These are what I used in a recent stream, actually. I'll link that in the top right corner. Um, you can literally spawn so many screamers. It's actually unreal. It's great fun. I highly, highly recommend it. If you've never done it, give it a go. More of an early game version here. More of a mid to late version game over there. Tip number 28 is where to find ores in different biomes. As you can see, we're in the forest biome, which is primarily lead, but you can find lots of things such as iron. This is an iron node. This is a nitrate node. This is a coal node, and this is a lead node. As you can see, they're all different. They've got different features. Now, maybe get a pen and paper for this. I'm going to stop and put it on the screen here. Forest is primarily lead. Wasteland is primarily nitrate. Desert is primarily oil shell. Snow is primarily iron or nitrate, I believe. And the burnt biome is primarily coal. You can, you can get all of these in different locations. As you can see, I found all of these in the green biome today. Um, but this is Navi's game. If you do random world gen, you'll probably find you'll find different ones in different locations. The only other one I've got to talk about now is oil shell. This is an oil shell node. It can only be found in a desert. It cannot be found anywhere else in any other biome. So to get gas and to fill up your vehicles and your augers and your chainsaws, you'll need to get some of this bad boy right here. And it's only found in the desert. So tip number 29, you can find all of the seeds for all of the food in the map. You don't put points into them. Tip number 30, forge not just a forge juice you can actually burn jukes into your forge and it gives you brass very very quick so it's very cheap as well what i tend to do is go and do missions grab a load of money stick it in a forge and actually use the jukes to make brass to make bullet casings the more you burn in the more bullet casings you can make it's basically an unlimited supply of bullet casings tip number 31 to do with electrics and more specifically into intellect into advanced engineering you don't have to, if you don't want to, put points into any of these. All the traps, all the electrics, all the turrets can all be found bookwise, perkwise, in the world or from a trader. I very, very rarely put points into this at all. I usually find all of my stuff, um, you know, on the map or from the trader. And whilst we're on the subject of books, this tip is to do with Master Chef. It does help. It does get reduced costs of meat and so on and so forth but it's not important because you can actually get all of your books all of your medicines all of your food and drinks all in the world looted or from the trader so this tip is you do not need to buy any of the books or drinks you can find them all in the world it is not necessary to put points into master chef we're back at a trusty trader for tip number 33 the respect potion you can only be bought from the trader grandpa's forgetting elixir basically you put in your hot bar you drink it and it resets every single one of your points. So the points you put into here earlier are now gone. 
What you can do is, like we said in tip number 31, you don't have to put points into electrics, but you can if you choose to. Late game, what's usually a good idea, or what I have done a few times, is respect all of my points into here, built all the stuff I needed to build, made all the vehicles I needed to make, then took another respect potion and spec back into other builds that I like to go into, such as mining builds and so on and so forth. So tip number 33 is respect into things, build things such as crucible, uh, crucibles, traps and so forth, and then respec back into your build, which you usually do to kill zombies with. Tip number 34 is for beginners, and this is when upgrading blocks for Horde Knight or defending your base, upgrade the second block first. For example, this is three higher. One, two, three, it's three higher. Now the zombies will not smash the bottom, they will not smash the top, they will always smash the middle. So if you're gonna upgrade anything, make sure it's the middle block. This will be the first block they attack. So upgrade the center first before you upgrade either the top or the bottom. If it was me, I'd upgrade the center like this. And I'd start working on the bottom. Only once the first two layers are complete, being the second, then the first, I would then work on the third. So tip number 34 is upgrade the second block first before any other blocks. Tip number 35 is zombies can stack up higher, <laughs> two or three blocks higher. So here's two blocks. Usually a zombie cannot jump on top of two blocks like this here. A zombie cannot jump on two blocks right here. However, if we was on the roof and zombies came along, they would stack one on top of the other and actually get up. Let me try and show you this now. Couple of darlings, will they jump up? Hopefully they will. So they gather together. Usually they'll jump on each other's head. No, you don't want to do it today. You're going for the car. Okay, this is seven days to die. Path in, in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, usually jump on each other's heads and they'll jump up to here. It's hard to show because it's not Horde Knight. But usually what they do is they come over here. She would be there, for example. This one would come over, jump on her head, and usually manage to get up there. Something like this. Um, they're not doing it today, but as you can see, yeah. Seven days, eh? seven days pathing, people. <laughs> Now we're looking at vault doors and how to run through them without waiting for the very, very long animation of waiting for it to open and close. If you're getting chased by a horde or a dog or anything of that nature, if you run towards the door and you keep holding sprint, if you go to the bottom left-hand corner, my stamina is going down. Then when you press E, oh, it takes a long time and you go through. The door's still open. How to close it behind you without waiting for the animation is you run towards it, press E. As soon as the door is about to move, you press E again. Ready? I press E. Press E again, I'm through, and the door closes straight behind you. Hard to show about a second person recording it, but essentially you keep sprinting into it, press E, press E again, and it closes behind you, and you go straight through without waiting for the animation. Tip number 37, how to instantly kill demolishers. I love this one. I have a base, which I'll link in the top right-hand corner, uh, which I've done. When Alpha 19 first came out, essentially pipe bombs, they're dirt cheap to make. They're so easy into perception and i think it's the first level of here yeah one point here craft pipe bombs right there so it takes literally one point and you can get these bad boys and they instantly kill demolishers so drop say five on the ground with left click one two three four five and then right click the sixth throw and just stand back a little bit and then once they blow up so will he and as you can see instantly dead didn't go off nothing happened yeah instantly killed demolishers Tip number 38, poles can stop zombies and will not let them through even though they're not a full block. Let me try and explain. So what we're going to do is we will go hold R, go to advanced rotation, and we're going to move this around until it's facing at the top like so. Now, as you can see, there's actually a hole here, but zombies can't get through. So let's quickly spawn a crawler on the other side of this. So spawning the crawler, grab his attention. Now, as you can see, he cannot actually crawl. He's stuck in this block right here. This pole acts as a full block and the crawler cannot get through but as you can see you're standing right here you can kill him but he can't kill you and with this the same goes for dogs a little thing with dogs is you actually need to place another one on top so currently we have this position if you press r it brings it back down to here right click we now have what the game considers a block at the top and a block at the bottom so if we spawn a dog just beyond here say right here grab his attention his head glitches through, he can't get through, he can't get you. He's basically stuck just like the crawler. A little bit glitchy, a little bit game breaking, but hey, great fun. There you have it, 38 tips and tricks for 7 Days to Die Alpha 19. 
I believe Alpha 20 is out around March next year. I am aiming to get 5k subs to be part of that stream developer early access weekend. If you enjoyed this video, if there was any of these tips that you didn't know or brought you value, please feel free to smash like. I do have a further 30 more tips. If you'd like another video just like this, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to make a second one full of different tips, different tricks, ready for Alpha 20. I cannot wait for it to come out. Keep crafting for survival and I'll see you in the next episode.